Despite the numerous videos on this platform dedicated to explaining Jenny's hate train from the years 2017 to 2020, gathering hundreds of thousands and at times millions of views, I still find people being shocked at how coddled Jenny is. K-pop fans constantly express how annoyed they are at the lengths Jenny fans will go to to defend her on everything, no matter how wrong they think she is. These reactions are often eye roll inducing, as I think it's quite obvious how we ended up here. Nearly two years ago, I tackled how cancel culture fails in K-pop, and one of the main reasons I presented was the consequence of creating overly protective fandoms, making it difficult to critique and criticize certain K-pop artists. Idols such as Jungkook, Mia, Bang Chan, and Garam have gained overprotective fan bases because of the endless amounts of hate that they have faced, and for some, years on end. Turning idols into punching bags for any reason bears its fruit and overprotective solo stance is one of them. In the second section of the four-part series that I titled The Blackpink Olympics, I'm touching on how Jenny's excessive hate train created a fan base so overprotective that they came up with any excuse to defend her, religiously hate on any of the members of Blackpink like it's a 9 to 5 with a hefty bonus, and victimize her at any given opportunity, even when the backlash she receives is at times warranted due to her own actions. The intention of this video is to emphasize how hero complex, pity, and infantilization intertwine to create this mess we now know today as Jenny Solo Stands. Usually issues such as mass hate have a snowball effect. One thing pisses people off about an artist, then another, then another, and it goes on until a point at which almost no one can trace back to where it started exactly. The hatred of Jenny took a similar effect. It started as a minor annoyance, then evolved into resentment, which then balled into fault finding, found its way into nitpicking, and finally exploded as a full-blown hate train. But what makes it so complex is that there's so many factors along the way that added to it. To this very day, Jenny finds herself in the midst of incoming waves of hate and controversy for almost anything she does. And I I doubt it's something that's going away anytime soon. If you ask one person why Jenny gets hate, answers will vary. Some people will claim that it's because other solo stands are jealous of her. Others will insist that she is favored by YG Entertainment. A good number will emphasize that she's lazy and it shows in her work ethic. Plenty will suggest that K-pop fans are just immature in general and have nothing better to do with themselves. Almost everyone with an opinion will focus on the fans being immature and toxic or Jenny being an alleged terrible person and hardly anything in between. Despite all this hate, Jenny has some of the most dedicated fans and supporters in K-pop. Her solo stands are known for being toxic, obnoxious, carrying a superiority complex, but mostly constantly defending Jenny, no matter what the issue at hand is. Criticizing anything Jenny does is seen as hate, and the need to defend her kicks in almost like a natural instinct. And while I do not approve of this behavior, I'd be a liar if I said that I didn't understand it. When a group is introduced, one of the things that fans love to do is pick a bias. There's always that one member that sticks out to you, causing you to fall in love with either their talent, stage presence, visual, or online personality. Yes, I said online personality because for the millionth time, you do not know these people. Speaking of online personalities, members of groups are usually given unofficial roles by fans. There's always the ace, the all-rounder, the pretty one, the crackhead, the cute one, the cool one, and the boss bitch. Jenny was the boss bitch. As a group's main leader with stunning visuals, a dominating stage presence, and a slightly intimidating aura, she clearly fit the bill. While being loved by fans, having this online persona is a double-edged sword, because one slip up and they will be using this exact same persona as a reason to dislike you. Hate hardly ever starts as hate. It starts as a brewing set of emotions left unchecked and not thoroughly dealt with. As I mentioned earlier, Jenny's hate train started with annoyance brewing into resentment. When the public started to resent Jenny for being pushed forward as the face of Blackpink, the boss bitch persona was interpreted as her actual personality. This was due to the fact that fans needed a justification for their resentment that didn't make them look vile and barbaric. It was public knowledge that decisions such as pushing one member at the expense of others was way above Idol's pay grade. Faceless characters behind the scenes pulled all the strings and made those choices, and there was nothing idols could say or do to change it. Hating an idol for something beyond their control was frowned upon by K-pop fans in general. So if people needed a reason to hate Jenny, it had to be because of something she herself had done, no matter how small it was. Small as, say, making a mistake on stage? 
Making a mistake during a performance is not a big deal, but what makes this case different is that fans had been looking for months for a legitimate excuse to turn on her and make her their emotional dump truck. A similar situation happened to Yeri of Red Velvet. People hated the fact that she was added to Red Velvet after their debut, despite the fact that she was already part of the original lineup, but this not being Yeri's choice made it difficult for people to hate her without looking barbaric. So when she missed a few steps during a performance, all hell broke loose and her being called all kinds of names and criticizing her for literally anything became a norm, including crying at her own friend's funeral. If you look for anything long and hard enough, you will find it, and fans were desperately looking for a reason to dump their anger on Jenny. This was because of built-up frustrations of Blackpink hardly ever having comebacks, YG taking advantage of their current starved fans, repeating the same formula in music and not being creative with the group, and members not being treated equally were increasing at the speed of light, and all they needed was a reason to explode. Jenny being hated for anything less than being perfect on stage had absolutely nothing to do with that. It was simply an escape for fans to let out their kiss on end. Yes, in hindsight, fans knew that none of these decisions were made by Jenny, but the combination of her being pushed ahead of the rest, YG not taking their frustrations into account, and those making decisions being completely anonymous became the ingredients needed to bake this perfect storm. The hate wasn't just dragging her in comment sections and making up a personality that probably wasn't anywhere near the truth, fans created a crisis that did not even exist. Compilations of Jenny not giving the best in performances went viral on social media spaces and Jenny started being called all kinds of despicable things. When a hate trend has so much depth and layers to it, it reaches a dangerous point of no return, the point where the subject of hate is no longer seen as human. Being behind a screen and on a keyboard on social media spaces that allow you to be anonymous almost creates this empathy repelling force field around some people. They say whatever it is that they feel in the moment and don't stop to think about how this affects the other person, let alone imagine how they would feel if the roles were reversed. When looking through some of the things said to, about, or in reference of Jenny, you could believe that this was being said about an inanimate object. Words such as bitch, selfish, obnoxious, fake, slut, to accusations of hating Blackpink, taking advantage of fans, and having intercourse with YG and Teddy for success. Yes, they went that far. Were used so frequently it felt normal? which was terrifying. Criticism should have its limits. It's not impossible to have an issue with an idol or call out their behavior without all the name calling and false accusations. But this is in common practice online because in that space, people's identities are not at risk. Fans did not even look for an explanation as to why Jenny was underperforming. Neither did they want one. Jenny was their target and unless something crazy happened to her, they would not stop. And eventually, something crazy did happen. 인터넷 접속하면 가장 뭘 해? 음, 음, 인터넷, 인터넷, 인터넷 잘안 해. 하루에 제니 이름 몇번 검색해? 빵 번. 제니에게 일주일의 휴가가 주어진다면 하고 싶은 일은? 핸드폰을 바닷속으로 던, 던지고 없앤 다음에 잠수. 아, 그러니까 없어지기. An interview of Jenny resurfaced on social media, and for a second, people were stunned. The nature of this interview was ominous. When asked how many times she searched up her name on the internet, Jenny said zero. When asked what she would do with a week of vacation, she said that it would be to go someplace where no one could find her or even contact her. Jenny looked like she was at the brink of tears the entire time. She looked so nervous as if someone was holding her at gunpoint, constantly playing with her hair, and avoiding eye contact with either the camera or the interviewer. The whole thing was so unsettling, people panicked, and it seemed like for the first time they had come to a realization of what they had done. They had hurt Jenny so bad that she wanted to disappear off the face of the earth. And just like a broken record, K-pop fans yet again started their conversation on the importance of mental health for the millionth time. Right on cue, Jonghyun's name and his death were flung around like a pendulum, and people freaked out even more. Seeing Jenny in this helpless and almost pathetic state made the fandom as a whole absolutely terrified at the possibility of losing her. Hating her was easy when she seemed like a boss bitch who could handle anything and didn't care what people thought. But here in this interview, seemingly vulnerable, fragile, and even a little scared, the public felt the need to hold back even if it was just a little, in fear of creating yet another tragedy that they would be blamed for. The public backtracked on hating Jenny so far, they swung to the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Anytime Jenny seemed a little down, slightly tired, or not as enthusiastic as usual, 
Fans claimed that it was due to the extreme hate that she was facing and that it was to blame for her fragile mental state. And this caused Jenny to attract something she hadn't in years, sympathy. And the girl who was once a villain turned into something no one expected a victim. With the same levels of desperation toxic fans used to villainize Jenny, sympathizers used the exact same tactics to victimize her. Jenny's name and the word depression were like peanut butter and jelly. It was almost impossible to see a comment mentioning Jenny without pointing out all the hate she was facing at that time or diagnosing her with depression and a host of other mental health issues. Fans made compilations of Jenny seemingly down or at times where she cried at concerts to prove a point to haters. Mind you, I use the word seemingly for a reason. We're not sure that Jenny was in Indeed depressed. I'm not declaring that she wasn't, but what I am clarifying is that there was no definitive statement from her agency or doctors or Jenny herself claiming that she was going through depression. It was merely speculation, but fans didn't care. They found a weapon to victimize her and they were going to use it. Any noise made by Jenny haters, sympathizers drowned it by just screaming twice as loud. And any comments attacking Jenny would be met with hundreds more defending her. And in the process, shit got personal. To even the fighting ground, Jenny supporters counter-attacked any hate Jenny got by attacking the other members. For instance, if a Rosé stan attacked Jenny for being quote-unquote lazy, her fans retaliated by attacking Rosé's inability to be stable on stage. And if a Jisoo fan did the attacking, they came for Jisoo's weak stage presence and so on. When YG decided to end the year on a high note by giving Jenny, the most resented member of the group, a solo, which was winning on music show-ins, the hate only blew like a fuse. Even worse, this happened around the time when TWICE released Yes or oh Yes. And despite TWICE members, Nyon included, who is really close to Jenny, and their normal fans were happy for her or congratulating Jenny for breaking a record, Toxic Onces were not having it and joined on the overflowing hate train. This is when outsiders joined into a problem that was originally amongst Blackpink fans. With these fans launching an all-out war on her, division among the fandom became wider, creating four fan bases strictly associated with standing one member and wanting nothing to do with the other three. While Lisa Rose and Jisoo stands were complaining about Jenny's marketing allegedly minimizing and coming at the expense of the others, Jenny's stan base was focused on defending it. These four sides' main goal was defending their favorite member by putting down the other three to prove her point. But it wasn't just that. With Jenny having a successful solo and being seen as a threat that would overshadow the group as a whole, the other girls' fan base vouched for them to receive what Jenny had to prove that A, not only could they do it better than her, but B, that there was nothing special about Jenny that made her an it girl or YG's secret marketing weapon. It's a bit of a trip, so try to keep up. Rosa Stance complained that Jenny sang way more than she needed to when she didn't have the alleged quote-unquote golden voice of Korea, which was Rosé. Feel free to laugh with me. They also claimed that Rosé was a lead dancer and had way more stamina than Jenny, so her having more center time did not make sense. Rosé's voice made her unique while Jenny had no outstanding talent that made her recognizable, so Jenny was supposed to have her attention. Jisoo Stance claimed that Jisoo was the main visual and had the perfect visual face that many women, not just in South Korea but around the world, wish they could have. Not to mention her beautiful voice and the fact that she was more stable than Jenny during live performances. Lisa Stans claimed that Lisa was the wild card, she was funny, she was sweet, a better rapper, a better dancer, had better stage presence, and had a bigger international fan base, so why not market her? Jenny Stans were being attacked on all three sides and being expected to come up with a real reason why Jenny was being pushed more than Blackpink itself. The heat from all three sides was rising. Not to mention all their anger on YG mismanaging Blackpink was being dumped on Jenny. This was when the first phase of turning from Jenny's heroes to becoming villains began. Jenny fans just snapped, but this was only the beginning. When Dispatch outed Jenny and EXO's Kai's relationship literally on the first day of 2019, an already terrible hate train got worse, with anti fans spreading misinformation that Jenny was breaching her contract, even though that wasn't anywhere near the truth. Adding to the mean girl assumptions, haters claimed that Jenny was dating because she quote unquote didn't care about her members or fans' feelings, which is ludicrous, but it didn't matter. April of that year brought us Kill This Love, a comeback for Blackpink after a 10 month hiatus, and Jenny was not playing that era. Blackpink also attended Coachella, where Jenny performed like her future depended on it. And in some weird, twisted way, it kinda did. Since a little after the Soul concert in September of last year, they had been defending her viciously against haters, and finally their point had been proven. Jenny wasn't lazy, Jenny wasn't incompetent, she wasn't a bitch or inconsiderate. If she could perform this way in this era, then there must have been something else going on, right? 
And it turns out they was. Jenny did just explain a few days ago on a podcast with Dua Lipa that she learned a lot about her body during her time as an idol. Over the pandemic and even up to right now, I, I, I've learned to take care of my body. And I've learned a lot about myself with my health and how my muscles work, how bendy I am with my yeah. arms, with my, like, in every detail that I've spent time. And it's all started because I would constantly hurt myself during performances and lives compared to other girls. And it was just a stressful thing in my life. I'm like, there we go. I fell again. Like, I tripped mm -hmm. over again. And... Like, I realized that even though I had the training days, that was more about I need to be good at dancing, not how do I keep myself safe and healthy while I'm, you know, doing doing, doing yeah. this. So I feel like I've dis disappointed my fans at some point of my life where it seemed like I wasn't giving my best. But I haven't had the moment to say this, but I want to say that I did not know how to control my body and like use my body the way I should and mm. like something like I just don't do well in heels you know some people are amazing in heels <laughs> of me being like one of the shortest girl in the group I cannot work with heels I my feet aren't built for heels. <laughs> <laughs> even though I I try and you know sometimes when I'm feeling perfectly fine like when my body's well, on it, it like it's sometimes. fine but yeah. Yeah. When, when I'm like traveling so much and my body's all bloated and my feet are like so bloated, I just, if I try to dance in heels, I just, my stamina just goes really down because I know it's uncomfortable for me. So mm -hmm. yeah, stuff like that. I, I've wanted to come, cl not come clean, but wanted to share with my fans that I'm still at a point where I'm learning about myself. Mm -hmm. Um, if anything, so. Yeah, let me yeah. let me be the person to share me like from now on. And <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Sympathy for her increased in June of 2019 when it appeared that Jenny was struggling to breathe at an event in Manila for Shopee. Jenny was taking deep breaths and trying as hard as she could to control it while smiling at the same time as an effort to cover it up so that her fans wouldn't worry. It went on for about a minute before Jisoo recognized it and gave her some water. Fans freaked out because it was genuinely terrifying to watch and Jenny being Jenny of course reassured her fans and told them that everything was fine even though plenty felt it wasn't. Jenny struggling and trying her hardest to be strong only made her defenders even more defensive of her. They saw themselves as more than just her fans. They were her heroes. And this wasn't out of pride or anything. It was genuine fear because towards the end of 2019, K-pop was hit with two tragedies that shook us to our core. Sally, a former member of FX who had suffered from online bullying nonstop for years, was found dead in her apartment, believed to have taken her own life. Before the shock could even register, a little over a month later, one of her closest friends, Hara, who had suffered just as much bullying, followed with the same fate. The uproar on idols being protected from online bullying reached an all-time high in and out of South Korea. Fans were pissed at K-pop companies' toxic stands and the industry in general. And between the hurt from the girl's deaths to the fear of losing their favorite idols, defending K-pop artists no matter the issue was becoming a norm in fandoms and Jenny's fans were no exception. Part of it came from YG putting in less than the bare minimum in taking action to protect her. And with 2019 having shown us a perfect example of what happens when idols are left unprotected from online violence and exposed how little companies seem to care, it felt as if the job was left up to fans now. The hate on Jenny didn't exactly die down, at least not by much. It is just that those who took it upon themselves to defend her her had become louder. With Jenny's image shifting from being an unbeatable boss bitch to a fragile, vulnerable idol who was hated for breathing, fans felt as if it was their responsibility to defend her on everything, and anything negative regarding Jenny was seen as hate. Yes, there were plenty of Blackpink solo stands and non-Blackpink fans hating on Jenny for no particular reason except that they wanted their faves to have her attention, but there were plenty that had genuine criticism regarding her rap skills, dancing, stage presence, vocals, and the like, but her fans were having none of it. Those who had loved Jenny since debut had seen how harsh K-pop fans and the industry treated her with a cold and unrelenting hate, forgetting that she was human with feelings. And watching her endure all the hate that she suffered throughout her career was sad, painful, and especially exhausting. These fans swore to themselves she would never 
go through that again. Despite all the noise, crying, and complaints during the morning of Sully and Hara, most of it was nothing more than performative because in a few months, fans had proved that they literally learned nothing from these situations. And like dogs who go back to their own vomit, toxic K-pop fans backslid straight into their patterns without missing a beat. K-pop companies showed no signs of wanting to improve on protecting idols, once again transferring their bare minimum responsibility to the fans. Since Jenny had become a damsel in distress and her solo stand were her knight in shining armor, the hate on her only increased their fierceness, and they started to fight fire with even hotter flames. In the words of Stefan Salvatore, to beat the villain, you need to be the better villain, and her fans lived every word of that phrase. In the past, they defended Jenny from toxic army or other blinks, but this time, everyone was feeling the heat fans, K-tubers, and even reactors who were either not the biggest fans of Jenny or even had the tiniest bit of criticism found themselves being targets of unrelenting hate. Some who faced hate happened to be fans of Jenny, but because they didn't view her as a final boss of K-pop rap or stage presence, they couldn't escape the fury that her fans carried. Jenny stands had quit pleading with people to be kind to Jenny and threw everyone, haters and fans alike, or people with negative opinions on the girl into one furnace pit with little to no mercy. The saddest part of all of it was that the other three girls who genuinely loved Jenny became their main targets. They headed on the girls to win a petty pissing contest with their solo stands. Lisa was their strongest target because she and Jenny were the most compared members of the group. Both being rappers, strong performers, and the label's quote unquote favorite and least favorite, the war between them was unquestionable quenchable. Lisa Stan saw Lisa as a victim of Jenny's so-called favoritism, while Jenny Stan saw Jenny as a victim of Lisa Stan's vile online behavior, going as far as to label them the most toxic solo stands in all of Blackpink and to some degree, all of K-pop. Jenny Stans went as far as to blame Lisa for allegedly being favored as a rapper by YG in place of Jenny, as that being the reason why Jenny wasn't rapping as much in Blackpink. Only recently, and by recently I mean like literally a few days ago, did Jenny reveal that she actually chose to sing more because she wanted to explore it, which obviously made her toxic stands feel stupid for blaming Lisa for all these years. Apart from Blackpink themselves, BTS was also their biggest target, mainly V. While the war of Blink vs ARMY deserves its own video, it is important to mention that the biggest war after that was always between V stands and Jenny stands. For instance, the time when V joined Instagram and accidentally followed Jenny, these delusional stands harassed Jenny for being followed. Yes, you heard me right. They harassed her for his mistake. Jenny Stans refused to idly sit by and watch her get dragged, so they took straight to V's new Instagram to drag him nonstop, calling him names and insulting him and trust me, no one can retaliate like a Jenny Stan can. That was phase two of her stands becoming toxic. Phase three, defending Jenny even when it was obvious that she was wrong. By 2021, every member of Blackpink was given an archetype by fans based on their supposed reputation, and Jenny was seen as the rebel. With reputation being such an important factor in South Korea as a whole, Jenny being involved in so many quote-unquote scandals was seen as not ideal and against the status quo hence the archetype. From mid to end of 2020, K-pop had taken a break from targeting so much because they were preoccupied by two other idols at that time, and Jenny Stan's only problem were other solo stands. But once people were done toying with Jimin and Woojin's mental health and got bored, Jenny was being dragged once more by the general public for allegedly ruining her reputation. In February of 2021, Dispatch claimed that Jenny was dating G-Dragon of Big Bang and that she had been for about a year. And while this man is considered a legend in the industry, plenty of people do not like him. For good reasons, which I will not get into. I'm not ready to start an argument that I cannot finish right now. But mixed reactions came out of the situation. One reaction was that Jenny was allegedly dating too much, considering that literally a year prior she was dating Kai of EXO. And here she is now allegedly shacking up with G Dragon. Yes, in the century, we are still judging women based by the number of people they date. Isn't that something? Fans, however, were frustrated with Dispatch constantly inserting themselves into Jenny's dating business and making it public, which led them to the conclusion that she was being targeted. Other stands, fans, and non-fans alike claimed that dating was not a problem, just the person she was allegedly dating. It was simply bad for her image to be seen with someone like G-Dragon. Being an idol or a celebrity for that matter, associating yourself with certain people is seen as bad for your reputation. I'm sure we remember how the public reacted to Suga telling Taeyang that BTS wouldn't be anywhere without Big Bang, 
or view following T.O.P. on Instagram or Jimin collaborating with Young in a music video. So Big Bang as a whole was a no for most K-pop fans. But this was just the beginning because hanging out with people who were seen as shady and problematic would become something Jenny would be known for. In April of the same year, Jenny was accused for breaking the COVID-19 protocols when she and six other people went to a location apparently to film for a YouTube music video. The gathering limits at that time were five and Jenny had also posted pictures of herself with no mask. See where I'm going with this rebel thing? Even though the blog location claimed that Jenny had received approval to be there with her friends to film, fans were not having it. Jenny was seen breaking rules, therefore she was a bad person. 2022 felt as if Jenny was purposefully trying to escape this idol image. The rebel archetype was taking effect as she was doing things that the normal idol would be hardly seen doing. For one, in December, Jenny was spotted clubbing, and while some K-Nets labeled her as carefree, easygoing, and chill, a huge number were displeased, saying that her image as an idol was being quote-unquote demolished and claiming that she needed to quote-unquote be ashamed of herself. Ooh, child. It is important to express that Jenny is an adult and has every right to party and go clubbing. Fans used this defense, which was a valid one, but the issue comes to the way that they would behave after. Because you see, the thing is, while you can defend Jenny for being an adult, you have to be consistent with that defense every single time. That energy was nowhere to be seen months later when the HBO Max series The Idol dropped. The show had been criticized for its bad writing, the storytelling, not to mention the rape glorification, mishandling of mental health issues and screenwriting, and its nasty written sex scenes and the billion other things that I would need a full video to list due to the addition of the director Sam Levinson. Fans scrambled to defend Jenny for being on a show this problematic. Anything from she didn't have any power to she had to fulfill her contract and it's not like she could leave when Sam Levinson joined. Which, mind you, if you check the timeline correctly, Jenny was never part of the original cast and the original story. Clearly she joined after Sam Levinson was added. And this is important to note. Jenny herself has spoken up as a quote-unquote longtime admirer of Sam Levinson and that she quote-unquote trusted him to be collaborative. Jenny was seen by fans as an adult when it came to something as unserious as clubbing. But suddenly the narrative changed when it came to her involvement in this series. Her fans have refused to acknowledge that she knew what she was doing, or better yet, was okay with it. Same could be said when it comes to her friendship with celebrities such as Canadian singer Grimes and taking pictures at her then-boyfriend Eurospace company SpaceX. Fans debated whether Jenny knew about Elon Musk's long history of striving on the backs of underpaid employees and how her being in his company shows that she she either supports it or doesn't care. Other supporters claimed that she quote unquote probably doesn't know any better. Once again, acting as if Jenny is a child, incapable of looking up or researching the people she chooses to spend time with chooses being the operative word. Yes, it is quite a delicate argument, but the important thing to note is that her fans constantly cherry-picked when she was seen as an adult, in charge of her own life, and when it quote unquote wasn't her fault and she quote unquote didn't know any better. Pity along with infantilization have power, loads of it. Jisoo isn't the only member of Blackpink who's gained a fan base out of pity. There's little that Jenny can do to lose a following or support in general, because a huge part of her fan base has this unknown and almost unrealistic fear of what would happen if they turn on her. It's psychological. The amount of pity she gained from that one resurfaced interview was a turning point in her career, and the amount of defending she's gotten for her less than average performances during tour, the characters she chooses to hang out with, her own personal behaviors in disrespecting others' cultures, and participating in a terribly and insensitively written TV show while defending its director speaks volumes on that. There are plenty of K-pop idols such as Liz, Kayo, Changyan, Bahi, Onda, and a bunch of others who gain popularity because because they were either the quote unquote least favorite of their respective companies or that they got plenty of hate for something in the past. There's something about being a savior of an idol or anyone in general that makes them tick and feel important. It is wise to note that some people who are underappreciated in their nuclear spaces, such as families or school environments, often seek this validation elsewhere. 
and by elsewhere I mean mostly online in this century. They may not be individually recognized for their saving efforts, but when they band up with other fans, it feels good to have that little tribe that they can count on and have the same interests as them. The biggest problem with Hero Complex is that you never see the person you have decided is a victim as anything other than. You perceive everything around them as a threat, even when the criticism is warranted and fair. Accountability on Jenny's part is almost non-existent because they'll be held to pay for anyone who asks for it. Let's take the lazy hate train for example. While the hate was obviously unnecessary, no one is even allowed to suggest the fact that because Jenny is aware of her physical condition, that it is her responsibility to prepare herself to the best of her abilities in terms of building her endurance or try to take extra care of herself around tour or concert times so that her body is ready for them and not just go on and off stage every five seconds. From a consumer point of view, they pay for these concerts and it is only fair to get what you pay for. And before someone brings up the ridiculous quote unquote, people bought these tickets with their money so no one forced them to come defense yes they did but that was under the pretense that they were going to get real performances not half-baked low effort stages for getting choreo of a huge discography of 10 songs imagine if promotional posters were written half ass performance and we aren't even going to get the choreographies right and expect several mistakes and energy lower than your favorite rookie groups no one's coming, but proposing a real concert and then dishing anything less than what they paid for is literally scamming people. The hero complex says Jenny stands pulling intelligent, deficient arguments such as this just to defend her. They treat her like a child who will crumble in the face of criticism, even if the critics are right. They'll rather damage others' mental health by hurling death threats in order to quote unquote protect Jenny. What they refuse to realize is that behavior such as this can be taken advantage of. K-pop stands always claim that idols are human when they're being hated, but also fail to acknowledge that same argument when humans are being defended from rightful backlash. Humans can take advantage of that if they know that they'll get away with anything. Infantilizing them makes you see them through rose-colored lenses. Jenny fans refuse to even entertain the idea that Jenny joined and stayed on the idol because she was unbothered by its well everything that she wants to break out of k-pop into mainstream hollywood so badly that she was willing to do this they pretend her friendships with shady characters in hollywood have nothing to do with the fact that she wants to hang out with these people and chooses to spend time with them despite no matter what the dangers of this however is that fans can go to extremes such as creating problems that do not exist like claiming that jenny was depressed or going through depression because of hate just to justify fighting with people on the internet or defending wrong actions that have been made by this idol because they see her as a damsel in distress that's helpless without them. The crazy thing out of all of this is that those who participate in mass cancel culture for whatever reasons created this overprotective social media monster. Trace any overprotective fandom and believe me, their roots are defending idols from extreme hate online. So trust me when I say it is comical to see people who participate in harsh cancel culture cry about fan bases being overprotective to unreasonable levels asking, how did we get here? <laughs> Honey, that answer is simple. It's you.